Okay, so welcome everyone to the evolution meeting. Uh, today, the 28th of September 2022. So, we don't really have a formal agenda right now, but it's a way of announcing the way forward for the evolution uh, working group. Keep in mind that uh, a lot of changes have happened in recent past that would truly affect the way we work and the way we see open source. We, we are really enlightened to see the changes that PyTorch joined the uh, Linux Foundation and the rich library, which is really the number one competitor of TensorFlow. I don't know if any of us here have uh, been using uh, machine learning or deep learning libraries. Now, the kind of things that uh, Chaos does, especially in analytic health, there is a couple of concerns that we would like to investigate in this kind of uh, directives and see how we could also enrich the, that community and ourselves, especially in bias. There are a couple of cases of uh, biases in data that uh, this kind of frameworks have been using. And how can we really like bring in that health component to start measuring and analyzing uh, those kind of uh, concerns? So that's the high level of things that we would like to see. We, we have been growing. We, are, we still keep on growing. There are a couple of metrics that we will be developing within our community. Sometimes we are, uh, we are stuck when we don't have ac actual data, like concrete data, to work on. But when projects like this, a rich, well-established project, is joining the open source with all the experiences that they have had, I think it's a plus for all, each and every one of us. So I, uh, what I envisage is we will use uh, metrics in the diversity, like diversity and inclusion, because these are also uh, things that we could measure within the, the, the machine learning or a kind of open source project. And we have a couple that are available right now for the kind of things that evolution will really see how you know we could uh, analyze the health. Now, we have things like, we mentioned biases, we have in, uh, underrepresentedness in, in, in subgroups, which is something that we discussed uh, last week. I think four days ago, we had an international conference where we were discussing this kind of uh, concern. In the so we would like to measure and try to build, define the metrics and try to implement it to see how we could enrich and how Kiosk could also enrich many other open source projects. We're not limited to, to our Kiosk uh, community. We'll try to expand it across different communities since we now have the data. So I don't know if there is any uh, advice, concern, or something that we could discuss and share so that in the couple of days when we'll be laying down the groundworks to continue from what uh, we have been doing from the past, you know, and also to have a, a kind of guidance from Sean, who we'll, we'll try to have a roadmap so that by next releases, we really have something concrete that community can, can take a look at and try to give feedback and as well, we make releases. So I don't know if the suggestion, the overview, the high level overview that I gave, it's something that uh, people here can throw in some light or, you know, bring in some other way of looking at things. So what are your thoughts? So here, yeah, take this by first step. Uh, I'm just trying to like go through the repo and the focus areas. But, you know, looking at how you started with like PyTorch and, you know, the success of PyTorch, you know, um, during like the Linux Foundation, you know, the Linux Foundation project. I think um, another way to kind of like look at things moving forward might be to, since we, since the Evolution Working Group um, discusses like life cycle of open source projects, um, looking at this successful, I wouldn't say, should I term it successful open source project and seeing the different things or learning I won't say survey, but taking um things from this 
um, open source projects that you know have evolved over the years. You know the different things, maybe getting feedback from the project leads or you know that collaboration on how they have been able to evolve things over the years. You know success rates, all those kind of things, getting feedback and. It could help um, inform future metrics or even, you know, help us reassess our own metrics that we have, right? Yeah. Just like the the project we were carrying out with, like the underrepresenting the DI working group, by right? carrying out with seeing how um, the DI metrics kind of like resonate with um, underrepresented people in open source, um, something could also be similar to how looking at successful open source projects and how, you know, their, their success can help define future metrics or even reassess our own metrics. Yeah, that's a good way. Uh, if, uh, Elizabeth, do you have something to share? I, the only thing I was that I put, I started the agenda so that if we want to capture some of this, then we have a place to do it. Um, I think what you're all both saying makes complete sense. And I think that evolution in some kind of meta way, in the evolution working group is also evolving because, you know, we've been traditionally just looking at like this low hanging fruit of different things you could measure and so it's been like pretty straightforward and now we're kind of getting into like the meat of things and the heart of it and so like i think the things that we're going to try to measure are harder and take a little more thought and effort so i think it's awesome that's all i wanted to say okay thank you so yeah ruth i really agree with the explanation you gave on those uh directive you see like one other aspect that uh, we set this kind of high level work because in this evolution some of these projects like PyTorch they might have been successful in terms of what they are doing in machine learning but not necessarily on the open source practices because those are areas that most projects don't have expertise in now why some of them tend to be successful it's been developed by academic community, industrial communities, for example, Facebook uh, was mainly behind PyTorch, why Google is behind uh, TensorFlow. When a community like that brings in academic researchers, some of them at times work with the algorithmic aspect of it to make things work. And the kind of algorithms that they have been writing, using, training the, the, their data, might not necessarily compile with the way open source community is really managed. And this is the advantage that we comes in to say, okay, now this is a project that has been made open source for us. It's been donated to this community. We could mine the repository. There is, <clears throat> there is an analysis we call mining software repository. We can go, we can analyze the repository from the day it started to see how it evolves over time. We now can learn patterns that emerges over, let's say for the past 10 or past eight years, we could learn now patterns that emerges. We could now see some uh, bad practices, some good practices, as you men uh, mentioned. Now we could do those things quantitatively, even without asking their opinion, because we have the repositories. We could learn all those uh, things now from the data that they generated over time. And that's one of the most accurate way of learning. Then we could also reach out to developers who are like maintenance and things like that now to ask them perspective. We found this, what were your thoughts and things like that. Those are open questions that are across, the, across time, we could now go into that in depth to really see you see, like we mentioned, uh, biases. If you look at PyTorch, one of the common libraries that they have been using in image classification, they collected more than 1 million images, let's say, to identify or to predict if something is uh, like between uh, 
different classes of animals, handwritings, and things like that. Some, in most of those uh, data set that they have, majority of the time they collected it from a, a set of group. It's not too representative. Do you get what I'm saying here? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just imagine that they want to, we want to collect data to predict if uh, you are driving, you are self-driving. I'm just giving example for machine for the sake of PyTorch that we are talking about. You want to identify if somebody or an object coming is a, is a human being, it's a man, it looks like man, woman, a kid, an animal, like something like that. Those images that they collected over time will help to identify based on the training that they have given it. Now, I mean, most part of it, they will collect images from one region of the world, which is not well represented in other regions. So we'll be looking, we can look into this kind of things to say, oh, even though this algorithm seems to predict and differentiate between man and woman, babies and things, it could identify the kind of uh, objects it, it's dealing with, but then representativeness is not well structured. How do they collect it? We could now try to build matrices that will, be, will, will bring in those uh, missing components that Kios is so interested in. And then we try now, we can export now that kind of knowledge to other communities because we have the data right now. At first, we, we had the, the overview, but when we don't have concrete data, it becomes difficult at times to measure things at higher scale. So those are the, the, the benefits that uh, those things are bringing. But notwithstanding, it's an open discussion. We have the data right now. It's interesting right now. A lot of things at our disposal to really move on to different level. It doesn't limit only to one aspect like PyTorch. It's just something that came like on the news of recent and we can move in some other direction. So even metric six from D and uh, diversity and inclusion from common, all these other areas that we could see open source happening when they are joining, are they coming with values that we could learn? Are they coming with things that we should capture right now and say, oh, even though this thing is a plus, but hold on, might be there is something you could improve. Just imagine we, we, we find out something that the PyTorch was doing that was truly anti-open uh, source, and we ra raise a red flag to Linux, to Linux Foundation and say, oh, look at this thing, even though they've become open source right now, this is a practice that we could amend. It's not well represented. It's not, uh, it has this kind of thing. If we have concrete data like that, then we are really changing the landscape of open source. So we want to evolve in that, um, uh, in that space. Armstrong, I think you bring up a really excellent point, um, a few excellent points actually, but um, <clears throat> this like deeper look at evolution and like taking different lenses with it, um, mm -hmm. I think it's like something that could be the future of chaos as we grow. So for instance, not just like taking the evolution metrics and looking at them through a DEI lens, as you just suggested, but also like looking at the DEI metrics and looking at them from a risk lens, you know, like how do, how do these affect yeah. the risk of the project and things like figuring out how we integrate the working groups yeah. and besides just a metrics model where you're, you're just taking a few metrics and putting them together, but really integrating our working groups together and using all these different lenses as we look at things, um, I think is really where the chaos project can, like you said, provide serious value to the open source world in general. Mm -hmm. So um, I love that you're starting it here because we haven't really, to my knowledge anyway, made a concerted effort to do that in other working groups. It's We've been kind of acting in silos, I think. Um, but I think that this would be a great um, framework for if we can figure out how to integrate those other working groups and using those other lenses in mm -hmm. an evolution context then we have the framework to do that in other working groups as well yeah so yeah thank you for that uh, big <laughs> overview it's a very big summary that i like thank you elizabeth 
And you see one other areas that evolution is uh, important, but sometimes not really felt in, in, from an external perspective. You know, when we talk about evolution, like the name even suggests, we, we don't just survive, but we try to create the next generation of things that will happen. We create a space, a framework that things should continue and expand in that, uh, in that space. And then you see uh, sometimes in the past, I think people like Jesus, uh, Jesus I don't know if uh, some of us here know him, he did a very great work, and uh, I think they were one of the people with Grimoire Lab. You remember him, Elizabeth? Jesus. Yeah, he's still part of the community, but not, I mean, he's still carried out with other works elsewhere. He mentioned, he started in a very good footing in most areas that at that time were not, uh, my, myself personally was not really like seeing what he was saying at that time, but now I think I have the, the, the vision of what he was uh, proposing. Daniel and many others that were also involved at that uh, period in time. And I think this is something that will really expand our working group, make the things like bringing that integration aspect of it and really give uh, a, a good flow. Why we will still keep, you know, it's just a way of measuring things now when we are making um, uh, an overview from an external view, even within the kiosk, we talk with, with some degree of uh, certainty. We don't just measure, I mean, our individual groups, uh, like, uh, uh, sorry, like our individual uh, working group, where we try to see the, the implication and impact that it can also create within the op uh, open source world, because that is where people start consuming. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that approach a lot. And I think that, um, as you mentioned, also, there's this tie into research and data. And I think that chaos is in a really good place to help with that or to, I don't know, if to drive that, but, you know, to start these different research projects, even to verify and to dig deeper in some of this data um, mm -hmm. that's that's floating around out there. So yeah. I kind of I really like that approach also just to kind of verify and um, yeah. Okay. So why we uh, we'll have a kind of discussion with Sean in this to come just I mean for things to you know to explain and in, for them I mean for the community also might be in the community and in other area we'll be having this kind of feedbacks and things like that to expand. So it might also bring a kind of inter project or interworking group kind of collaborations that will really strengthen works that people have been doing in different uh, uh, fronts. So hopefully next week uh, or next meeting, Sean will be, most people will be available, right? Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Because there is a lot of talk right now going on about um, sustainability. And I think uh, I'm also involved with the Open uh, Stack Sustainability Group. It's really a major concern. And I know we already have this discussion going on here. And the, the good news is that even at, uh, uh, at the level of the European Union, I remember last uh, time we went to Germany for this conference, even the European Union was really raising awareness and trying to create a, a kind of sustainable open source program, but they don't, they don't yet have the model to follow. You see, they, they know that this is an issue, this is a problem, they, they know that there is a benefit from open source. Yeah. So I think we have a lot of chances to make ourselves visible in some of those little areas and things like that. Because even within the open stack that we are, we are still starting, the, the, the community is still starting from scratch now to see how they, they, they could start implementing or measuring things at that level. But I think Kios have been having this discussion for quite some time. 
Yeah, I think that's huge. I think that um, sustainability in any community is a huge deal because, you know, I think um, I think you want you want to grow your community, obviously, and you want it to evolve and mature. But at the same time, if the growth rate is too much, it it's unsustainable. It, it will burn everyone out. Like you yeah. can't, you know, you can't manage yeah. that. And so like, you know, figuring out what the best path of sustainability and growth is for your project based on your goals and your own resources and your own bandwidth, like I think is a huge thing. And I think it would be really helpful if we could kind of even break that down into, you know, here's, here's a formula. I don't, I know chaos really hasn't done that those kind of like judgmental metrics or like prescriptive metrics of here's how you do this. It's more of like, here's how you measure this thing. But man, to, to have that kind of data available for someone like, you know, to know how many new followers or how many new contributors should I, should I get, or should I try to get that will keep me sustainable, mm -hmm. but not overwhelm me? Like, where's that sweet spot? Where's that golden kind of golden zone there? Yeah, I like that Elizabeth. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I mean, it will open a framework where we could discuss, and I think we have the tools right now. And the most interesting thing is as data coming up from different communities, even with the ones that we ourselves we are generating at small scale, we are our community is growing. The African community is doing well from what we could see. The Asian community is growing well. These are already indicators that we could pull these resources together and start looking at things seriously in a, in a, in a, in a broader way. Yeah. Because I know, especially if you take the African community, the growing rate is telling a story already. The Asian community is telling a story. Now, if we try to analyze that within chaos itself, or we'll see some directions that things are moving in a way that might be, you know, we did not, uh, we were not even expecting. Like what you said, we could now look, you know, we could now do some kind of learning process because we have, uh, well, I can, I will not use the word we, but there are a couple of theories that have been developed for quite some time like what you said, Elizabeth, to bring out this kind of sweet spot. It's never easy to to figure it out, but it is, there are things that, algorithms that you can run on certain data set based on certain domain knowledge and things like that to learn what are your best spots at this given time. It might move based on certain external conditions as well. But I mean, people have risen along that line it's just that might be we need to implement it, then we see how it works over certain uh, realities. Because each person may have their own sweet spot, which differs from one to another. Yeah. Yeah, which is why we've kind of stayed away from adding that, that like prescriptive element, like where this is good or this is bad or, you know, judging because yeah. everyone's so specific to their own context. Mm -hmm. But um but yeah, just to give some guidelines, you know, of if you have this many maintainers, maybe this would be a main a sustainable rate of growth for new. In I don't know, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those discussions. Yeah, we were talking. Yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, sorry, I was I was just uh, summarizing what you said. Go ahead, please. We were um, talking in the office hours about Hacktoberfest and, you know, ways that we can contribute or participate, I should say, as as chaos, the community. And what's really interesting about Hacktoberfest is that it's meant to help, you know, open source projects grow and, um, you know, get more mature and evolve and all of these things. And it ends up just overwhelming the maintainers because you just get this huge influx mm -hmm. and so like there's this disconnect you know between this initiative and what's reality and it almost like i mean i think it's better now but like hacktoberfest back in the day was just like super stressful yeah right only for the t-shirt as Vinod said like <laughs> it was it actually worked the opposite of you know helping a project grow it just made the maintainers feel overwhelmed and burned out and wasn't great so like it having some of this data and these metrics could also inform 
external initiatives that are trying to help open source projects, but maybe they don't have the data behind it to, to know what the best way is to help open source maintainers, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And that I agree because a lot of bl uh, blog posts that I have seen and read around open source and software communities in general are like most opinionated. Then, the, the, I mean, uh, even though there are some serious works that have been done, those are researches with concrete, uh, I mean, uh, data, but then sometimes the, the blog post that sells out so fast in social media fora and things like that has, are hugely opinionated by people's own biases, which sometimes, you know, don't tell the, the, the real story. That's a fact. <laughs> They're yeah. selective in their <laughs> yeah. the way they share their information. Yeah. yeah. I think this is all super interesting, Armstrong. I'm really happy that you're taking this on and helping us kind of shift and, and evolve this group. That's really awesome. Yeah, thank you. I think that was really the major uh, thing I just wanted to share with us today for the meeting and uh, hear people's feedback and see how we could start planning the weeks ahead. I tried to drop a few of the notes in the oh, agenda, yeah, yes, but yes. if there's things you want to add, by yeah. all means, feel free to yeah. do that. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. So how was Ireland? Were you there? I did not go in person. I just attended remotely. Okay. It's a little far. Yeah. Anyway, but the virtual conference was awesome. Oh, so. okay. Okay. I think that was my main uh, issue. I don't have much to share for this meeting today. I'll just be planning for the agendas and the next uh, roadmap. For the Sounds good. Yeah. Should we stop recording? Are we done? Yes, we can start re recording. Venom, are you